What is up, bro? It's me, Josh, here. In today's video, we are going over the eighth season of Ranked Season, which just ended last night. It's officially done, and I hope you guys got whatever you were going for this season. If you're going for Rank 1, hope you got it. If you're going for a certain reward, hope you got that. Or if you're just playing to have fun and checking it out, hope you had fun this season. Overall, though, what I'd like to do is I'd like to do a pre- uh, ship what I think will be good and kind of at the end um, what ended up happening and talking about the meta and this so that's what this video is going to be all about this season was ran by this destroyer and this destroyer I was actually the one that got me ranked one this season and it's the low yang before the season basically started they uh, nice they gave this thing a nice little buff to its sonar so the sonar about 5.43 kilometers was pretty insane and you wanted as many low yangs as possible on your team and you would have a massive advantage this was the first season we've really seen though with the new smoke changes and it was definitely obvious um, but this is a very different season destroyers it was very bipolar in the past we've basically seen a a really not too many cruisers uh you know we would see the event the occasional like when belfast belfast is pretty strong fiji is pretty strong but most seasons have been kind of cruiser short it's mainly been destroyers this is the first time it's been back to eight, uh, rank eight in a few a uh, few tiers i think it's gone tier seven tier six and back to eight now which tends to be kind of everyone's favorite i would always play the benson benson uh, this is an extremely strong destroyer but without the buff to the loyang there's no real reason to play otherwise but there were certain ships that were very very prevalent in the season and that's like the kudas off and the chapayev and the chapayev was extremely strong too as well as the Atago and the Takao. basically some of the ships i thought would be based the strongest um you'd see the occasional edinburgh but in my opinion it wasn't that strong and it was almost a free kill and new orleans could be played pretty well but we didn't really see too many of them because the chappies rate of fire the chappies uh range the distance on radar was just is, is extremely strong uh, and its ability to torpedo something is extremely strong as well. So Chappie was obviously the go-to cruiser for lots of success. And I saw this being a, uh, what I thought would be the strongest uh, cruiser. And it really was. Kudazov was very strong as well. Um, just couldn't get too close, of course, with the smoke changes. And the Otago and Takao were kind of pulling up, I think, probably the third strongest. And then kind of everything else. Battleship-wise, though, it was pretty... I I played some Amagi this season and it was it was it was all right. I still think the king of this season and this tier are with the North Carolina and the Alabama. Both of these things did extremely well. Um, North Carolina did just as good as the Alabama. I think the Alabama could maybe get a little bit more aggressive this season and just the ability to bow tank on these ships and with the six shells going forward uh, was just too good and very 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 effective in the accuracy one thing i did notice when i was playing the amagi um this season i kind of took a little bit easier it's by far my lowest win rate season just kind of messing around had a lot of fun this season really enjoyed it i know a lot of people haven't enjoyed the season everyone said this has been the worst season so far but i think everyone says this season is the worst season so far to whatever the current season is so i don't know if everyone really disliked it um what ends up happening is people tend to, to get uh mad at one ship that annoys them uh the season before was the he firing fuso because it sucks and it was really annoying before that of course was the belfast and uh now i think this season was probably the low yang um, but for me, when I played the, the Amagi for about half the season, was just kind of messing around. I noticed that it was it was inconsistent um, with its accuracy. It does that Fuso style shotgun effect where you kind of just hit stuff. But when you need to really do some big shells, it wasn't there all the time, which I think the North Carolina and the Alabama both have compared to that ship pumping out less shells, but more uh, accurate and more of a bigger hitting shell, if you will. Um, cruiser wise though, like I said, uh, Chappie, Cuda, Otago, kind of the top, North Carolina, uh, Alabama were the top two, probably following by the Amagi, then followed by the, the German battleships. Uh, CVs, CVs are very lackluster this season, and that's what I kind of expected. Um, I think most CV players even really had to rank out with other ships, which normally doesn't happen. There's normally enough CV players, um, playing to get them to rank one, but I don't. I don't know. I don't really know. I haven't looked into it really, but I don't know if any CV mains were able to rank out CV only this season, especially in North America. 
Um, I know a couple of the, the big CV players really had to start playing other ships because there just weren't enough CV players. And I think it's just because the CV was pretty tough. I know the Enterprise, obviously I don't have the Enterprise, um, but the Enterprise was the go-to. Those AP bombs on battleships were absolutely brutal. Its ability to strike, and of course the USN fighters, which was just kind of able to take out Shokaku. The Enterprise was better against battleships, so Shokaku was better against uh, destroyers. So it depended on what you were kind of seeing. And it seemed like for me during the day, uh, destroyers were pretty hot and heavy during one time, and then battleships would play later in the night, or vice versa. That's kind of, I touched on it once before, that in the past, there's been a, a, a concrete meta almost, where um, a lot of the times it was four destroyers, two battleships, maybe a cruiser or a third battleship, and then sometimes, you know, it was, it was very, very linear. It would be the same thing almost every game. This season, you'd have one game with four battleships, and the next game with four destroyers, and then you'd have one game with no battleships, and you'd have four cruisers, and one time you'd have one destroyer, and it was, just, it was kind of all over the place, which is good, but I think it's because this is the first season that people didn't really know what to do because of the smoke changes. Um, in the past, you could just smoke up, sit and smoke, um, whichever DDs ended up being the best, uh, ended up kind of spotting winning the destroyer battle and then you moved on from there then you kind of take out the rest of the team this was a bit different playing a destroyer was a little tougher this season um but that made a good destroyer that much better i guess this season because it, it was it was so much tougher with the amount of radar going out and uh um just the difficulty of pushing in at the right time getting out baiting out the radars spotting for your team hitting the right spots and um, stuff like that so it was a different season I think definitely a learning process and I think that's one of the things that people were so used to oh well you can smoke up and you can do this and we can be effective this way and metas that have been built in this is the eighth season of playing ranked eighth season um, of us kind of doing the same thing over and over and over just different tiers or maybe some different map different maps but this is the first one where the it was actually pretty different, and you had to be pretty careful with your battleships. Battleships played a little bit farther away, and um, you had to just kind of learn the game over again. But overall, I had fun. Uh, my my thoughts on ships were pretty damn similar, and uh, to to what the video I had before the season. And overall, I think it was a pretty fun season. Um, as you can see, it is over right now, and if you got rank one, this is the eighth season, the first one was the pilot, but if you got rank one every time, you can get the extra camos, we don't have them yet, but you'll hopefully be getting your prizes soon, if you got three, you'll get the USS Flint, if you got five, you'll get the USS Black, and if you got seven, you'll be getting camos for each one of those, so that's pretty freaking cool, and looking forward to those camos, I was hoping for another ship, um, maybe we'll have to wait till nine. Well, I guess technically the 10th season. So nine Jolly Rogers overall to get the, the overall next ship. Who knows what they'll end up doing. Um, my thought was going to be the Massachusetts or the Salem. Um, and that is both work in progress ships of the Massachusetts was the one that's just like the Alabama. And then the Salem was for, uh, basically Des Moines. These are both work in progress test ships. So um, the stats you see right there are subject to change, so just got to do a little disclaimer. So I thought one of these might be the reward ships, but obviously they didn't want to do that this season. And uh, instead, we'll get some camos for our stuff. So I guess that's kind of cool. Um, but overall, I think uh, I think it was pretty similar for Destroyers. I guess I didn't really go over Destroyers. Um, destroyers this season, one, Lo Yang. Benson was very, very good as well. Kagero's were very stealthy. The Harakaze actually was pretty uh, amazing at how good it was doing in the right hands. The Harakaze and Akazuki, this was my dark course anyway, and the Akazuki in the right hands was very, very strong. But it was extremely Benson, Lo Yang, Lo Yang number one by far. And really, the USS Kid, um, I thought this was going to be the easy go-to ship at number one. And I think it was strong in the right hands, but I don't think it was extremely strong. Um, I didn't, it just lacked the ability to consistently pump out torpedo damage with this just one launcher. Um, it was very good, like destroyer versus destroyer, but there's really no way it was going to, like, this is the strongest 1v1 destroyer, except in a lot of situations when the Lo Yang played it correctly and the Lo Yang would ha have every advantage. So the kid was strong, 
um, but not as strong as I thought it was really going to be. Um, the Pan Asian DD, I saw a couple people play. I just didn't think it was really worth it. Uh, it was good against like big ships, but really ineffective against destroyers. I don't think it was that strong. Um, maybe middle tier. Uh, Kagero, of course, is the, the stealthiest DD of the tier. Is always going to be the IJN line. And again, these are going to be effective in the right hands. Um, and uh, I saw a lot of people have a lot of success in the Kagero. Kiev, uh, we saw the occasional one here and there, but really just couldn't do enough. Um, that annoying flank was kind of taken by the Charles Martel more than the Kiev. And really, it was just them farming damage, not being effective for how few DDs were in some games. Agnavoy was pretty... It was ineffective at all. Uh, one of the worst DDs at this tier, in my opinion. The same with the Z23. Z23 was out, just outplayed all the time. And uh, basically, you didn't want Agnavoy's or Z23's. You wanted almost anything else other than those ships. But overall, I thought the season strength of ship-wise would be where it was. And it really was, you know. And um, But let me know in the comments below. One, how did you guys do this season? Did you guys get to rank one? Did you guys push to rank one? Uh, did you not really care? And two, what did you guys think about this rank season? Um, it's officially done. So um, I think we get a small little break before clan battle starts, which is uh, insane. I think less than a month, I think, clan battle starts. So in in out of one into the other, and uh, we'll see from there. So hope you guys uh, had a good season. It's officially over, so I think we'll be getting our rewards relatively soon. If you guys got one of the rewards, and I think I think today if you log in, you get the reward for hitting rank 15 and higher or, or lower or whatever, the commemorative flag. So that's always cool too. But anyways, just want to do a quick little recap of this season. Um, it was kind of a, a weird little mix of, okay, this is this, and we have a lot of battleships this game, a lot of destroyers this game, and, and this game we're going to have no battleships and lots of cruisers. So... Um, I think this season, we're, we're, people were trying to find the identity, and one of the cool things was this was the season that was actually cruiser heavy. We haven't seen that in a long, long, long time. It's always been battleships destroyer, so seeing cruisers be very effective this season was really, really cool. So um, I liked kind of the weird season, and hope you guys did too. But anyways, that's it for me, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.